I'm out here today at a construction site and I want to show you how I set up a 360 degree virtual reality tour through one of my projects using 3D Vista so you can do the same. First thing you want to do is figure out where you want to shoot so you have a path planned out. I'm going to run down the driveway here and then into the house and out the back and around. So I'm going to do that with a series of shots, um, photographs, and what I'm going to do first is connect the GoPro to my cell phone here. So I'm going to turn it on. Then I'm going to go settings, Wi-Fi, it's connecting to the GoPro right there. And then I can open up the GoPro app, find the camera, and connect. It's cold out here, but so the re I don't want to be in these shots, so I'm going to take two photos of each one so that I um, am able to get me out of the shot. Switch it to camera mode, photo mode, settings, protein, good to go. So I'm going to go around and start snapping some photos. Okay, so now I'm back in the office and I've connected my GoPro Fusion to the computer and started to pull up the images. Since I took two photos for each one, I'm gonna to have to download all these and add them to the render queue and render them out so that then I can overlay and Photoshop myself out of them. I'm gonna use editing 5K stereo format. Then I'll select where these are gonna actually be exported to and select render all so this will take a little time to process and when we're done we'll have some 360 images that we'll be able to pan around and bring into 3d vista Here's one of the videos that has finished processing. I'm going to open it with the GoPro VR viewer. So these are some 360 videos that you can create with the GoPro Fusion, although I'm just going to use the still panoramas to create the actual tour. So open 3D Vista, create a new project. These are all the various different types of templates that you can start with. You can have some various different menu styles uh, for navigating around your panoramas. For now, I'm going to choose the thumbnail setting and press select. And now we have an option to bring in videos, albums, or panorama, so I'm going to select panorama and standard panorama. Find the files. I'm going to bring one photo in so you can see how this works, and then I'll bring the rest in in a moment. It takes a little time to load. Then it brings you into a thumbnail image, which then you can preview, and you'll see that it starts to build the navigation around it. And now you can pan around in the preview mode. And you see down the bottom is the thumbnail. So let's go back and save this project real quick. I'm going to create a new folder for it. So now go to panoramas and we'll start to add more to this project. So select all the images that you want to add. Go back and open up Photoshop so we can edit those two photos and take me out of the picture. We want to bring both of the photos into, into Photoshop so then we can overlay them onto each other, create two different layers, and then basically subtract out me from the picture. So what I'll do is add those two layers and I'll do a marquee with a feather and erase out me out of one of the top, one of the shots. So I'll erase that out, then you got to blend without me in it. And if you don't move the camera and you have it on a tripod, this is going to be 
very successful. Um, even if it was pretty windy that day and still was able to overlay the images without too much uh, blurring or problems with that. So now open up the project back up again and you can start to find the images that you overlaid to do the correction where you took yourself out of the shot. And in my case, I always took the lower number as my control shot. So that's the, sh that's the one I want to replace. So I find that and then go up to the menu on the top right. And at the very top right, there's a blue folder icon. Press that and find that image and replace it. And you'll have to delete out the others if you imported them. I made the mistake of importing all the photos into this project. Now I have to go back and delete them out. But you can see this is me standing here. I replaced the photo. It, op it loads and then you can pan back around and I'm gone. So you, can, you can't even really tell the blending of it. So like I was talking about earlier, your path is important because when you start to get into linking all these panoramas up with hotspots, you're going to want to know the image number and the sequence that you want these to go in so that you can easily place those you know, in an order that you want. So what I did was I drew out the path and created a sequence. So now you can go into Hotspots in 3D Vista, select the image that you want to work with, and over on the right, top right, is a menu with a image icon. There's a bunch of different ways you can add links to this, but I'm going to use the Image button. Select the, the PNG from the library that you want to add. You can import your own. I'm just going to use these that they provide here. Select that and then click where you want to place it. So you got to kind of know where your image is going, your next image. And that's where the map comes in handy because you can place it about where you think it was when you were out there, which is right by that dumpster. So I'm going to put it there. Underneath it, there's some little tools. You can replace the image with something different if you want, um, things like that. But over to the right, under Actions, it says Add Action. Click that. On click, you change the behavior to Open Panorama. Select the image that you want to go to. This is where, again, your map comes in handy. Because you can't really see too much of what's going on in the image. Select that and click Done. And then you can preview that after you save it. Preview that. It has to build this program again. So this is, once you add a hotspot is when it starts to link everything up. And um, this takes a little while. So the preview will open here. And you can see your hotspot sitting there in view. So you pan around. You can see your thumbnails on the bottom, and when you click that spot, you're going to jump over to it. Now you can see the camera angle changes a little bit depending on where that image is, and I'll show you how to adjust that so that you come in facing the same direction that you left from. So you double click the photo under Add Action. That opens up the dialog again. Under the bottom, choose Custom Fix. And then you can position where you want to be facing when you jump into that photo. So this one I'm going to align with that house up there. So I know when I'm going towards that, I'm going to be looking at that house. So I'm going to position that so it's looking at that house there. So we should be looking right at the house when we jump up here, and we do. So it's kind of setting your your look, your vantage point, so you're looking in the same direction where you left. So you got a kind of frame of reference, um, and you don't get turned around inside this virtual world. So you go around and do this for all the views. You can adjust these things so they look a little bit better in perspective. 
size them down. If one's really far away, you can make it a little bit smaller than the other ones that are closer so you can uh, tell how far you might be jumping to. You can move them around after the fact. So if you want to place them in, then kind of adjust them and move them around. That's um, totally doable. So this does take some time to manipulate all the little places that you have options of going to, but it adds a lot of value to the overall tour, the more options that you give people to walk around and see the building. You want to be able to let people create their own kind of story and way of jumping around the project, uh, not forcing them in one particular direction, unless that's something that you want to uh, force a forced story upon them, have them go in one particular path all through the building. This this case, I'm allowing people to jump back and forth and kind of run around the, the house a little bit on their own. Now that you have all these position, you can go preview them after you've uh, done an initial save. It's going to rebuild the media and get you back into the preview. So then you can go around and check all the spots. Make sure you're entering into the views at the right angle. Um, if you're not, it's easy just to jump back out and make some tweaks on things, some adjustments. But there's a lot of uh, checking back and forth just to make sure you uh, get them all linked up correctly. You don't want to jump to one and it be the wrong thing. And then publish. That's your last part of this. There's different ways of publishing. You can publish to web, um, which creates a folder structure you can upload to your website. Then you can publish to their hosting service, the 3D Vista hosting service. Um, standalone player, which creates like an executable file. Uh, you can create a 3D 360 video that you can upload to YouTube. It just sets a frame rate and that kind of stuff. And then it looks like they're going to be adding Google Street View soon. I'm not sure what the date is on that. There's some publishing settings down at the bottom left. This is the generic setting that works with all the different devices. You can set the um, mobile scale, all that stuff, add a password. And then you want to tell it if you're going to save for web or some of these standalones, you want to tell it where you want to save. So you can find a location and uh, and add that to the, um, the location where you export and hit publish. I'm going to use the hosting service here. And then when you go back out to my tours, you'll see that the the site that you published is available, listed there. Down in the bottom right are some share links, which is one of the nice things about having it hosted on their media site. Um, you get one gig of storage, and you can hit that share button and actually share to a bunch of different social media, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, embed link, and just a copy if you wanted to text the link to someone. That same link right there is basically similar to what you would get if you click the actual link itself, but it takes it directly into Twitter so you can share it. Uh, Facebook, the same thing. This one right here is what you would embed into your website. So copy that and um, you can add that to one of your web pages so you can take your clients through other tours of properties that you've done. So here's go to my website here, whitewashstudio.com. I'm going to log in got a portfolio. I've got a project, this project that I'm building out the case study for. And um, I'm going to add that to the part of, this, part of the bottom, which this is construction section. So I added that, that iframe code that I copied from earlier right into the bottom there. If I preview it and scroll all the way to the bottom of this case study, you see right there, there's a uh, embedded video so you can pan all around you can uh, look pretty much everywhere you want to you can click the hotspots and jump over to that section so it's very uh, handy and loads really quickly so that is all for the video I hope you found this useful for creating 3d tours for your website and I look forward to uh, doing more of these videos for you. I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials like this inside of sketchupforarchitectscourse.com. So if you go over there, sign up to be notified of when the course launches. It's going to be a course that allows you to communicate more effectively with your clients using 3D uh, modeling and animation and things like this 
virtual reality stuff. So I'm going to be I'm going to have all kinds of lessons there that will take you all the way from sketching to virtual reality environments and how you can communicate better with your clients. So if you're interested, go sign up over there. You'll be notified first of when it launches and I'm super excited about it. Been spent a lot of effort on it and still a long way to go, but uh, hopefully in the next month or so that will be live. So head over to sketchupforarchitectscourse.com and check it out. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. And uh, let me know if these videos are helping you. Comment below, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks.